Good morning, everybody. A very warm welcome to Christchurch Orton this morning for our all age service, uh, a day after the coronation. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Sarah, the vicar here, and it is wonderful to see you all, to see uh, familiar faces and to see new faces. You are very welcome in this space. If you are online, we also welcome you as does our online pastor today, Fran Rimmer. It is wonderful to think that uh, one of the good things that came out of the pandemic was online worship. Who would agree with me? Yeah. Put your hand up if you've benefited from online worship in this church because you've maybe had COVID, you weren't well, you've been on holiday. That's been all of us, I think. So feel part of what we're doing today if you are online you are most welcome in the space, and especially if this is your first time with us. Just before we begin, uh, I want to make a couple of announcements for notices. The first one, I felt like I'd walked into a different church today because it looks, A, very tidy and pristine. So thank you to Barbara and Leslie for wonderful flower decorations. Absolutely. And... You will not believe David Cobbles and I, we nearly lost our lives several times this week. I was up a ladder right at the top. I hadn't done a risk assessment on that, but there you go. Oh, it was a bit hairy scary, wasn't it, David? But it was worth it to put the bunting up. But I don't know whether the observant people amongst us may have noticed that there's anything else a little bit different in church today. At the front, yes, our wonderful new screens. Um, so a massive thank you to Jonathan, uh, John, Lord Bill, everybody who has been opening the church for our sound and tech team. As you know, this has been a transition over several weeks. We're definitely not there yet. There were still some things to tweak and a handover to do. But one of the things I am delighted about is that all this mess here, Bill, you made up, aren't you, Bill Evans and Bill Casey? We used to have a lot of wires here, which you know, goodness knows, probably trip hazards and all sorts, it's gone. So it's all hidden under the floors and we've got amazing screens and hopefully the sound is going to just get better and better as we understand the system. So a massive thank you to everybody who's made that possible. Now, at the end of this service, um, we've had tea and coffee already, but at the end of this service, there will be bacon bombs served over in the ministry centre uh, because at 12.30 today is our APCM, which is our annual general meeting. This is where we look back over the last 12 months and celebrate God's goodness to us, and there is a lot to celebrate. Bill Evans said to me, I've just put the same font size in the book, and it's at least 10 more pages than it was last year. And that's because lots of new things have started and lots of growth. So I encourage you to come back, uh, to join us rather, at 12 o'clock for a bacon butty, 12.30 start for our APCM. If you can access technology either on the internet, uh, on your phones, PCs, the booklet is available on our website. There was also a special notices sent out on Friday or Saturday for you to download the booklet. We're just conscious of saving the planet a bit, which I think our king would appreciate seeing he's an environmentalist. So that's the APCM at 12.30 today. Now, next Saturday is the Eurovision party. And this is a really exciting time to join with our brothers and sisters from the Ukraine who are providing some nibbles for us. And we're going to get dressed up in whatever country you wish. And we're going to have a fantastic party in the ministry centre next Saturday. Is there anyone big fans of the Eurovision? There's only a few hands. Well, you're all about to become big fans because that's what we're doing next week. So come and join us and support. Actually, on a serious note, let's support our Ukrainian friends. This means a lot to them and they're excited about it. So let's us get excited too. And then the final notice at the weekend of Pentecost, just again for those of us who maybe aren't aware from the notices, but we start on the Thursday night with a Taze service at St. Michael's Church at 7 o'clock. Then we enter into 24 hours of online prayer. So if you haven't already signed up online for an hour slot or you're not sure how to do that, contact Gail in the office and um, she will put your name 
on the list. But we're going to pray together for 24 hours about our church community. And then at seven o'clock on the Friday evening, we're going to have a praise and worship time in here. Saturday of Pentecost weekend, we're going to have the church open between, between 10 and 12, uh, sorry, 10 and 2. And uh, Andrew Howes is going to organise a bike ride around the parish. And John Sefton's organising a dog walk in Rough Woods. So there's two more options for you. And then Pentecost, 10.45, Westhead St. James, the whole of the congregation will be joining us. So it's going to be a fantastic together. Okay. Now I'm going to publish some bands of marriage. It's wonderful to have lots of weddings coming up. So I publish the bands of marriage between Gemma Lauren Holden and Andrew Peter Bunting, both of this parish. This is for the first time of asking. And if any of you know any reason why these persons should not be joined in matrimony, then you are to declare it now. Wonderful. So let's pray for Gemma and for Andrew, who are getting married in the parish church. Is that correct? Yeah. Father God, we thank you for Gemma and for Andrew. We also thank you for Lauren and Nicholas, who are getting married here in two weeks' time. Thank you for all the wedding couples that we are encountering right now. We just pray, Lord, that you would bless them in their preparations. And most importantly, Father, that you would be in the center of their relationship, that they would know your love for them. In Jesus' name, amen. And just one final little notice and celebration. Leslie Roper, I believe it's your birthday today. Is that correct? Oh, you've got some lovely friends, haven't you? Or maybe you don't think you have after the end of this. So stand up, Leslie. Come on. We won't, I'm not going to ask you how old you are. And Tucky is going to play Happy Birthday to you. Are we ready? Happy Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Leslie, happy birthday to you. Well done Leslie, hope you have a very blessed day. Well we are here to worship the King of Kings. And it's an opportunity, even if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, we want you to just feel relaxed and open to maybe having an encounter with him this morning. So let us stand together now, if we're able to, and start our worship with a wonderful song, In Christ Alone, My Hope is Found. He is my rock, he is my fortress, he is my everything. Let's stand and worship in Christ alone. And then we'll lead into another great song, Oceans, reminding us that when life feels a little bit overwhelming, and I know there's a lot of people at the moment feeling like that at church, that actually he calls us to him. We can step forward into that ocean, into that problem, into that uh, storm, whatever it is, knowing that he will hold us. So let's worship together. Just nest, scorned by the 
Father, we are yours, and we just ask, Father, now as our children and young people leave us, that they may hear you calling them by name, particularly, Lord, those who are going to be starting their SATs this week, and those who are entering into a period of examination, that they will know, Father, that their potential is not just in a bunch of, of examination grades. It's so much more than that, Lord, that you love them with an unconditional love. And I just pray that this session that all of our children and young people experience today will strengthen their faith, Lord, in the knowledge of your love. So be with our leaders who've worked hard to prepare this session and we just ask a blessing on them in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, there is no Diddy Disciples today, so I'm sorry about that. I don't know, Jane, whether there's any option of maybe some of the older ones and explore, but I don't know how many you've already got. Neil. Okay, so maybe if there are people who do feel that they would benefit from going out and not staying in, just have a quick chat with Neil at the back. But the rest of us, if we'd like to take a seat, because whilst our children and young people are leaving us, we're going to sing a prayerful song now. Um, I love this song, Faithful One, so unchanging. You are my rock in times of trouble. Lord of all, I depend on you. There's a lot going on in the world, isn't there? Um, yesterday was a joyous occasion, but I was just also conscious of, in all of the joy, those who are suffering in our world right now. And what we must remember is that the royal family and the rest of us are called to be servants, aren't we? We're actually called to look at other people and to serve and to bring the good news of Jesus because actually at the end of the day, whilst we can't do things to help people, the God of immeasurably more certainly can. And that's what Jackie is going to be focusing on, the gift of God's love and grace today and the power of knowing his depth and the height and the breadth of his love. So let's just stay seated and as the group lead us in this song, Faithful One, maybe this could be an opportunity to forget all the people around us and focus on our upward relationship, our relationship with a heavenly father who loves us with an unconditional love so much that he would die for us on a cross. Let's sing Faithful One.
our hope is in him alone and if during that time of singing and personal prayer you felt that you would like someone to pray with you before you leave the service today do uh, speak to somebody it doesn't have to be somebody with a tug collar on anybody I'm sure will be willing to pray for you and indeed those online do message us and Jackie and I will always be able to contact you at a separate time to pray with you we recognize that God is unchanging he is faithful but we go sometimes our own way we choose our own direction and we wander away from the God of immeasurably more who knows us and loves us better than we know ourselves so we're going to enter into a time now of confession this is an opportunity to get right with God to be able to open our hearts to focusing on him so that when Jackie comes to speak to us and by the spirit that lives in and dwells inside of her, we're more open to putting God at the centre of our lives. So let's have this time of confession together. And if you would just respond with either Lord have mercy or Christ have mercy. Father, when we worship, when our worship has been more about us than about you, Lord have mercy when our songs have ignored the pain of your broken body on earth. Christ, have mercy. When our services have been more of an escape for us than good news to the poor. Lord, have mercy. When we praise you with our lips but deny you with our finances. Christ, have mercy. When our instruments are louder than our cries for justice. Lord, have mercy. When we fail to learn from the sacrificial worship of brothers and sisters across the world. Christ, have mercy. And may God forgive us our sins, cleanse us by the blood of Christ, and fill us with his Holy Spirit to lead lives of worship that bring his resurrection power to our broken world and inspire services of worship which reflect his heart of justice, mercy and humility. In the name of Christ we pray this. Amen. So before Jackie comes to lead us in a time of reflection based on a wonderful scripture, Ephesians, some of you will remember this was our Bible motto verse in 2020. Little did we know how much we'd need to cling on to this one before the pandemic. Irene's going to come and read for us now. Thanks, Irene. Good morning. This morning's reading is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. A prayer for the Ephesians. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven 
and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than, we, than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ throughout all generations for ever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Is that better? Oh, I'm blaming Billy and it's me. Sorry, Billy. Oh, Wally. Did you know, let me just tell you this before I start. I only found out yesterday that Wally and Karen were a couple. I seen on Facebook, Karen had a picture with Wally, so I messaged him and is that your husband? All that time, I never knew. Just a little bit of information there I'd like to share on the love between Karen and Wally that they got from God. So before we start, shall we pray? Father, we come to you this morning, the day after the king's coronation. We give you thanks for him and for his service to this nation. And we give thanks for the gift of love and grace amongst this community and beyond. Amen. So that reading we've just heard from Ephesians brings the first half of Paul's letter to the Ephesians to a conclusion. Ephesians is cleverly divided into two sections. The first half Paul teaches and the second half he uses the application based upon what he's been taught. And in those first three chapters we hear about what God has done for us. In those chapters four to six, Paul tells us how to respond to God's love and his grace. And yet Paul understands that this can be difficult at times. And this is so true. Sometimes things happen in our lives and we can feel upset, let down and angry with God. And Paul knows this too. And that's why he includes this prayer for us to share and know God's love and grace within us. So, a gift. Have you ever put a lot of work into a gift for someone and given it to them with the hope that they're really going to like this gift? Hoping that they receive that gift as you truly intended it? Or have you ever sent a text or a letter to a loved one hoping that as they read it, they realise just how much you've thought about them. Maybe if you're Irene, you've spent ages knitting or making a card for someone, and when they open it, you hope they get that gift and will be happy with that gift. So I thought we'd just take a few moments first to chat to the person next to us, thinking about that time when we may have received a gift Maybe it wasn't the gift that we wanted, or maybe we've given a gift, and we've really hoped that whoever that gift is for, we're hoping that they get that gift in the way that we wanted them to receive it. So just take a few moments, and then we'll feed back.
So I'm really going to make you work today. So who is going to shave, share with us? And those people online, if you want to put it on um, the Facebook page, I'm sure Fran will pick that up. Anyone would like to share about a gift they may have had, or maybe they thought they could have had a better gift, or a gift that we've given? Oh, no. What do you think, Leslie? You've had any gifts today? No? Well, you've had the gift of me being here talking to you today. Anyone, come on, someone must want to share that, what they've just been talking about. Thank you, Irene. I thought the nine o'clock were braver than you then. It's a long walk up here, you know. I've just said that I think last a uh, couple of weeks ago when we had our Connect Sunday... That was a gift in itself mm -hmm. because we sat and had a lovely afternoon chatting to people that we didn't really know. And I felt, although it wasn't a wrapped gift, it was a very special gift. Wonderful. Thank you, Irene. Anyone else? Anyone feeling brave now, Irene? Here we go, Graham. Yes, I'd spoken for some time to the family, but I'd like a cross to hang around my neck. I've not seen my brother-in-law for ages. They came up last week. He presented me with a cross he's made himself. Oh, he's made it. Can we have a look? He's a silver... <laughs> he's a t a t a t a oh, silver it's beautiful. Suit. And there's a little gold cross in the front. Oh. So. oh, and that's such a wonderful gift. So precious. Anyone had a gift that they didn't really like? That they're brave enough to share? Go on, Lynn. <laughs> David bought me a frog brooch, and I don't like frogs. <laughs> oh! <laughs> David, how didn't you know that? Made of pure silver. Oh, it was made of silver, so bonus. <laughs> Anything else gone be? Gary bought me this lovely dress and this cross. Oh, I love it. Well, do you know what I said to Rabina yesterday? I seen that dress in Morrison's and I nearly bought it. Imagine if we'd have come dressed the same. <laughs> the vicar wants to say something. <laughs> no, I just wanted to say um, the gift of a, of a church family, um, because as you know, mum's not, not so good at the moment, and just having that wonderful gift of people texting and praying, offering mm. to cook food to us and all sorts of wonderful things is wonderful. But my best gift, I was telling nine o'clock, is my lovely Lydia is home for 10 days, which is the longest <laughs> I've had a home in three years. So that is my gift. And it's a special gift to my mum because once she sees her this afternoon, I know she's going to get better. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. So back to the sermon, eh? So anyway, these gifts remind me of when my Ryan and Sean were little. I know I said to the nine o'clock before, I know you think I've probably got really young children with my complexion. Yet my children are 28 and 22, but it always makes my heart melt when they used to run out of nursery with this prized possession where they'd done this painting for me. Couldn't tell you what it was, but they came out and they give it to me full of love. And we all love these moments, don't we? Just like that frog brooch that Lynn got. It was still given with love, wasn't it? And this reminds me of this passage where Paul has brought the Ephesians a gift. He's brought them a gift that God works so hard to prepare, the gift of love and grace. And I pray that out of all these glorious riches that these gifts may strengthen us with the power of his spirit into our inner being so that Christ can truly dwell in our hearts. And in the first three chapters of Ephesians, God has given us his grace and his love without us having to do anything at all other than believe in him. Yet, are we truly happy and open to receive that gift that God has given us or will we put it away thinking we could have done better? And I know some of us love receiving gifts. I know I do. Yet, others can have a hard time receiving gifts. And instead of seeing the love and thought that's been given in the hand-painted yellow and pink ceramic bowl, we sometimes see that it doesn't really match our grey Denby bowls and our Welsh dresser. And we find somewhere else to store it. And it's like that when we read Ephesians. And although we know we've received God's grace and his love, 
it can wear us down if we're not living differently by it. And in order for us to be able to receive God's love and grace the way that he intends it, for a change in a positive way, we need a change of heart. He is praying for our open hearts so we can truly receive God's love and his grace. And that's the thing that we pray for. I don't know about yourselves, but I could talk about God's love for ages and ages. But that doesn't change me. It's when God gets hold of our hearts, your hearts, our hearts together. When we only appreciate that gift of God's grace, then we will be able to live differently by it. And Paul prays that, that we'll all be strengthened through that power of the Spirit. The purpose of this prayer is that Christ may dwell in the hearts of us through faith. He doesn't pray that we have a power that will improve our standing in the community or get what we want. He simply prays that our innermost beings is where Christ can make his home. And these words that Paul uses when he said dwell in verse 17, one means to inhabit a place as a guest. Kind of like when we go on holiday and we stay in a hotel. Sometimes we don't even unpack our suitcases. And you certainly don't start stripping off the wallpaper, do you? Thinking, how can I rearrange this room? We're only there for a few days. But what Paul is really saying is to dwell. The strong word means taking up permanent residence to really settle down in our hearts. Paul's praying that our innermost beings are strengthened so Christ can truly settle down and live there. And if Christ lives in the center of our beings, it's going to mean transformation and we'll never be the same again. Yet, we can't do things in our own strength and this is the same for King Charles or any leaders in any capacity. And how can we as Christians be on our own journey and be strengthened, I ask? Well, by reading our Bible, by attending morning prayer, by attending a life group, by doing anything like that strengthens us. And then we can then start to grasp how truly wide and long, how high and how deep the love of Christ actually is. This is what enables us to have that firm foundation of who Jesus really is in our lives. And then we start to catch a glimpse of his love through faithfulness. And this reminds me of someone I went to see last week. And this person, along with the family, is truly, truly a given soul. I've never met anyone so given. And for me, they are the hands and feet of Jesus in this world. You don't always have to be standing here sharing the gospel. We can do that with a smile, with hospitality, like Irene said. That is true love of God in action. So I'm going to make you do some more work now. So in Ephesians 3.20, we are told that God is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever, ever imagine. And as Sarah said before, that was the church motto in 2020 before I came. And I would just thought, would anybody like to share anything where they think of God doing something immeasurably more in their lives or something they can recall in the lives of someone else? Is there anyone who'd like to share anything where God has done something immeasurably more? I'm sure there must be some. Have a little think first. I've got the mic ready, guys. Oh, our Jane's coming to talk. Can you pass that to Jane, please? Thank you, Jane. Is it all? It's Sean? Press the button up. Yeah, try now. It was just working. Sorry, did I stand on your toe? Oh, I think we're pressing the wrong button, Jane. Oh, right. Try that one. Hello. Right. <laughs> Technology. Okay. So, um, about 10 weeks ago, 
my eldest son and his girlfriend announced that they were going to have a baby. And they announced it by giving me the gift of the pregnancy test. Oh. Now, they lost a baby last year. And so this one is very, very special. So she's now 21 weeks and all doing well. However, it's been a long time coming, this grandchild. I've waited a long time, but I've got two sons. And then the week after Mother's Day, I go to my youngest son, and they give me a gift of a photograph album. And when I opened it, there was family photographs. And then there was a family photograph of the two of them, and below, a picture of a scan of a baby. Oh. And I thought it was David's. But no, it's Richard and Sam. So I've got two grandchildren on the way, and the joy is unbelievable. Well, that's so. wonderful, isn't it? And that is a gift, really, from God, isn't it? Immeasurably more. Who else had their hands up? I think Lynn did. Thank you, darling. Thanks. Um, in October 2020, I had COVID really bad. Um, and the motto that year for me was very special because... Um, I believe that the Lord saved me. Um, I found this amazing peace with him, um, more than I ever have in my life, really. And, um, yeah, and I thank him to this day, and I definitely met him that day. Praise God. Uh, thank you, and thank you for sharing that, because uh, sometimes it's really difficult, isn't it, to share these innermost thoughts. Anybody else will have one more? Go on, Lid. I like your dress. <laughs> like yours too. Um, it's kind of going back off like what my mum was saying in terms of due to like everyone's prayers here and also God himself. Like I feel like my nan shouldn't be here right now based off everything that she suffered two weeks ago. Yeah. And the fact that she can, she's still here and she can also walk and talk again. Mm. That's just the best. The like, gods have immeasurably more. Yeah, Wonderful, exactly. wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, Lydia. So we'll finish there, otherwise we won't get home till two o'clock. Sarah might go, Sarah might bath in me. I've lost where I'm up to now. Oh, yeah, I know. So all them stories that we've just heard, and thank you for sharing them. It's really brave to, to share them, really. It just proves that Jesus is alive. Wherever we are in the world, it doesn't matter because he's within us. And we do hope and pray for God to truly dwell in our own hearts and in the hearts of those we love and those we encounter. And yes, we always pray this for our new king as he starts his reign on his earthly throne. Yes, his throne over this nation and the Commonwealth is a different throne than the Lord Jesus Christ. But yet we still pray for everything King Charles does and all will be done through the God's grace of love. So that's the first part of Paul's prayer. It's not just that we can believe certain things. This prayer is about much more than believing certain truths about God. It's that we will be transformed in the very depths of our being by the one who's taken up residence there. Verse 19 tells us that you may be filled with the fullness of God. And this essentially means that we will all become spiritually mature. We will be who God calls us to be. In other words, if we grow spiritually into the people we're meant to be, it begins by grasping and really getting to know the dimensions of God's love. And I'm sure that doesn't come from study or theological reflection or even years of attending church. It's by having that open heart to ask God to come and dwell within us. So I'd like to end by sharing a poem it is on the screen, but I don't think you'll be able to read that. It's just a little bit too small, don't you think? So this poem is entitled, God is Love, by John Reed. Love is in our hearts. Love is in our mind. Love breaks down all barriers. Love is always blind. 
Love can soothe or break our heart. Love can heal or tear apart. Love can warm or leave us cold. Love never ages. Love is in your soul. Love can make you happy. Love can make you cry. Love will never compromise and love will never die. Love has no price. Love is free. Love is all around you. Just take a look and see. Love is made for everyone. Love's from up above. Love's a gift from God and God's a gift of love. And I just think those words are so, so beautiful and so, so true. But let's just finish by asking you, have you experienced God's love lately? Have you really, truly grasped the limitless mass of Christ's love, that true gift from God? And once we have this, God will be dwelling in our deepest being and it will truly change us like nothing else. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you for every gift that you offer to us. Lord, we especially thank you for the gift of your true and unconditional love. And Lord, we pray this in your mighty and your precious name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thanks, Jackie. And I just think, again, what a joy it is when we uh, encourage one another to speak up. Uh, we had a lovely service in the ministry centre last week with uh, two testimonies. And if we can be encouraged each week um, and let our guard down a bit, really, don't be worrying about, oh, if I say something, people will, will think this, that or the other. I think when I look around there, a privilege to be able to sit up at the front and see that everyone's smiling as other people speak because it's it's what it says in the bible it's an encouragement it builds up the body and um, you never know your little personal testimony may be a huge encouragement for someone else who just needs to hear that so let's be encouraged to keep on doing that i know it's a bit scary but we have to say our oh, nine o'clockers are doing very well and you know not that we want competition but a bit healthy competition is good isn't it that we, we just want to have a church that we can encourage one another we're going to have a time of prayer now, and Anne Locke's going to lead us in that. Thanks, Sam. Right, good morning, everybody. Uh, we're going to pray for our royal family. We commit to you our new king, Charles III. We pray that you will strengthen and bless Charles to faithfully carry out all the promises that he made during his coronation service. We ask that he will serve our nation and the Commonwealth graciously and humbly, guided by the Holy Spirit. We pray for Queen Camilla, that she will dutifully support and encourage King Charles in his role as sovereign. We ask that she will seek your help and guidance. We also lift up to you William and Catherine in their new positions as Prince and Princess of Wales. We pray that the impact of the coronation service will have a deeply personal meaning for them spiritually. We dedicate Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis to you, Lord. Enrich them with your presence and bring them to your everlasting kingdom. We now pray for Christ Church. We ask for wisdom, unity and discernment for the PCC, especially around the big decisions of fit for mission. We pray for the growth of our life groups, we want all members of the congregation to experience the benefits of small group pastoral and spiritual support. And we pray for the new Youth For You group, that it will fill a gap for our young people to meet socially in a safe setting. 
we remember the sick? Tom Ellis, Jenny Rawcliffe, Nina Bridge, Louise Carlton, Jan Cashin, Stanley Cashin, Bill Evans, Paulette Franklin, David Moore, Keith Sinnott, Lindsay Styler, and Luciana. And we also pray for those in our church who have ongoing health issues. Ricky, Eric, Gerda, Gabrielle, Ian, Pat, and Bridget. And now we pray for those who've got exams. Over the next two months, many of our young people have exams. We pray that you will give them all resilience to revise, diligence in timekeeping, good concentration skills, and calmness and quiet confidence on the actual day of the exams. And there are a lot of names on the newsletter for you just to bring to mind. I couldn't mention them all this morning, but in your own prayers, that would be lovely to do that. Let's do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our prayer for growth. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, joy to our worship, wisdom to our actions, and power to our witness. Help Christ Church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Anne. Um, as Tucky and the group come to lead us in the national anthem, just going to pray the special collect prayer uh, for our King Charles today. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our sovereign Lord, King Charles, and all who are in authority under him, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour of your name, and the good of your church and people through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So if you're able to, please would you stand and join me in singing the national anthem. I will remain standing as our closing song today, Be Thou My Vision. That's a prayer that I pray for our church, particularly as we enter into the next year. The church year ends uh, now and begins again. So prayer for the vision of our church and our community, especially as I'm prayed with Fit for Mission. Vision for King Charles and the leadership of our country and vision for us personally as individual disciples. What vision can God impart on us today? So let's worship together with Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart.
And so a final prayer and blessing. This final prayer is taken from Lectio 365. May this day bring Sabbath rest to our heart and our homes. May God's image in us be restored and our imagination in God be restored. May the gravity of material things be lightened and the relativity of time slow down. May we know grace to embrace our own finite smallness in the arms of God's infinite greatness. And may God's word feed us, his spirit lead us into this week and into the life to come. Amen. And may God grant the living grace to the departed rest, to the church, the king, the commonwealth and all people, unity, peace and concord. And to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit remain with you always. Amen. Friends, let's go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. So don't forget, baking butties are 10 minutes away over at the Ministry Centre. And goodbye to all our friends on Facebook. We hope you have a blessed day too.